Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the um, to the July 8th. Uh, oh, uh, Jeremy, can you start recording, please? Oh, Jeremy's not here. Ah, it's already recording. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay, thank uh, Hi everybody, welcome to the July uh, 8th uh, UX SIG meeting. Um, so today I'm going to be today the, I'm going to go over the agenda. Everybody, we we are all we've all been here before in one of these meetings, so no presentations are required. So first of all, I we, I, I want to to give some updates on the status of the UX SIG work. I want to say to to go over the status of the uh, Forum Tables to Tips initiative um, PR. And then I want to present the tables changes, tabs and tables changes. I created a peer today. We'll go into it later. And then I want to discuss if there's comment a, a bit, if that's anything we can do for the next LTS, anything else. Okay. So does anyone to want to add anything else to the agenda before we start? Okay. Let's go. Everybody see. Everybody can see well my my screen, right? So, uh, regarding the use to tips, I've been putting where 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 did we leave it last week? So basically, um, we decided that it, it was maybe a bit too soon to decide whether it should go into the LTS or not, or it should be merged or not. Uh, we decided to talk about it this week. Um, unfortunately, I, I tried to unblock the PR to fix the, the table, the UI, the UI breaking issue. I wasn't able to do so. I worked one or two, two day, almost two days on it. I wasn't able to unblock it. Um, I also, I did put a noticeable amount of work into running ATH tests, PCT tests, and doing a comprehensive code search. I reported issues with almost around, I think it's around 30 plugins, and there are some plugins I didn't even report them. Um, I need to do it. So I, there was some work done. Tim also did some great work in, he, in forward reporting the JavaScript and CSS changes. The JavaScript changes are already in, uh, into the Jenkins master branch. So that's going to solve any possible need to roll back the to roll back the PR and to to simplify the well to reduce the final complexity and risk of the of the merge. So that's where we that's where we left it this uh, last week. Did I miss anything? Okay. Um, okay. The JavaScript yeah. was released in the last version, so it's out there now. Yeah, is, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, JavaScript was released in two 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 in Jenkins two two four two two forty four. Yeah, sorry. We'll have to CSS this week if we can get someone else to review it, um, and that just makes it far easier to rock to either feature toggle or rollback if we need to. Yeah, still we recommend. I think that the JavaScript, the CSS changes need a bit of fine tuning still. So uh, hopefully we will get to do it before in next week probably. But we just didn't. We we wanted to merge it before because it was getting stale. It was doing no good being just there. Okay. So if we've been trying to looking into the um, so I want to talk about the tables to the status of the PR. So far nothing has from my point of view, nothing has fundamentally changed. The breaking issue is still there. We did lots of groundwork. So on behalf of Cloudbees, I want to say that um, we, Cloudbees, we don't recommend it, merging it uh, before the next LTS or include it into the next LTS branch. We would recommend it having it done by the next LTS cycle, maybe merging it at the beginning of August. That said, we will, of course, in no way, shape, or form, uh, try to delay it. I try to delay it if the if the if the breaking issue, the yield breaking issue, is fixed, or uh, delayed merge, delayed uh, any inclusion in any in the LTS. We will support the community, of course. We just recommend against it, and we may not use it in our cloud base, in in our Jenkins-based products because we cannot just. Uh, there are lots of standing issues in uh, in many plugins. Well, some of them, I, many of them, I reported in the, into the Jira tracker. 
that we just don't have the we just don't have the resources to commit to fixing them in this summer. We will work on that after after the summer. And uh, in fact, we have already started some work. We did the test the I did the comprehensive comprehensive code search and testing issues. And, uh, and sorry, reporting of issues by, by, uh, with the tests, and we are already working on fixing some ATH errors. Looking into errors, for example, right now we are looking into errors with formalizations and the promoted builds plugins. We just don't think it's. We are just not confident into guaranteeing the quality by the September release. So we will. Let me reiterate: if the community wants to, if team only you and the rest of the community you think it's if the layout fixing stuff is ready you think it's ready to merge we will support you of course yeah we just don't think it's right it's there right, I need to, um just have one question what if we added the feature toggle um i think it's a lot easier now that we've managed to separate the javascript and css changes mm -hmm. uh, and yeah similar to the bootstrap plugin which has a just has basically two versions of the tags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean with a feature toggle, it it could work. Uh, but feature toggle, right now I don't know how how hard it would be. When I looked into it, um, for example, changes to optional block. I don't think changes to all, for example, optional block or radio block were forward ported, right? So okay. or advanced. Um, so uh, for those widgets, it's like two versions of the tag, and just yeah. Copy them. I don't know. We we don't have the resources to commit to do it right now, as Claudius. We 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 just are not able to, to work on it right now. Um, full capacity. I mean, in, in the capacity needed. But if if somebody comes up with that, I will make it a priority to test it and to verify and to review it. And of course. From my side, I can commit some time uh, for review and testing. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, my bandwidth is also very limited right now because yeah, my time mostly goes to Jenkins governance stuff at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'll do my best uh, to review that. Most likely, it will be just happening sometime on weekends. Yeah. Cool. I mean, once the CSS changes merged, I can take a look and see if a feature toggle was feasible. Um, it, w it wasn't feasible when the JavaScript was there, but I think it's a lot more straightforward now. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe just a POC with uh, the entry advanced optional block. And... Mm. Yeah. So those those widgets are just uh, hide and sh show and hide the stuff. You know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I will. I, as long as you have a draft, I will look at it. I will make it a priority to look at it. Yeah. I. Yeah. Once. Well, yeah. I'll take a look once CSS changes are in. I don't want to just to get the diff as small as possible. And I'll take another look as well just to see if there's anything else that can be r removed, just just to reduce it down as much as possible. Okay. Okay. Great. So, anything else? Ulik, do you have any opinion on this topic? You're muted. Actually, no, I'm not really using these fields very much since we everybody's now using pipelines and yeah. Okay. So, for me, it's good to change it and yeah. I'm not sure if it's good to change it before the LTS, but yeah, I don't really care. It's okay to change it now. And we need to fix some plugins anyway. Yeah, okay. okay at perfect. least I can fix my plugin, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I did report a few, yeah. I did report some issues on the warnings NG. Yeah, that's okay. This is part of the code I looked into two years ago, so yeah. Yeah, yeah but if it's behind a feature toggle like uh, Tim is proposing, 
So I guess in the current state, uh, the feature would be opt-in, at least for now. Maybe even enabled by default in experimental UI, because why not? Uh, and uh, we basically make it opt-out uh, once uh, we have more plugins stabilized. Is it right? Or do we want uh, to enable it by default? We would need to have a, just a review of the plugins um, and see um, whether there's any major plugins that warrant turning it off initially. The problem with turning it off initially is that no one's going to use it, so you're not going to get any feedback. Um, but if we've got some fixes in flight, it could make sense to just have it merged um, to make it easier to test and then enable it once a few fixes have been released. Yeah, that's a fair point. The current state, uh, we have no way to promote experimental features. So, yeah, we can write a blog post or whatever, but still uh, the feedback would be uh, not that high. Yeah, it's nothing like in GitHub where I literally get this big little blue thing up in the corner of my screen that tells me, oh, there's a new feature, and turn it on, yeah. and turn it on two minutes after they've released it. Well, I wish uh, to implement such identification engine. But yeah, now we don't have one. So I think that it would be really useful in general to have it. Mm. In my in my opinion, too many key, key plugins and high use plugins may break in or um, for me to comfortably recommend that it's opt in sorry, opt out instead of opt in. But I mean that discussion can take place once we are sure that's mm -hmm. feasible. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't see a point. I maybe it's not useful to discuss it right now. Yeah. But the notification idea is, is is good. Maybe I don't know if it's appropriate to leverage the the our not the current notification bell. I don't know if that's appropriate for that use. But okay. So yeah. So is there anything else to talk about this topic? Does anyone to want to chime in? Or Okay, so if you if if nobody has anything else to say, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and move to the table changes. So um, not very big updates. Joe's cooking some things up in the design uh, front, but he will show them. I think I'm sure he will show them next week. Uh, sorry, in the next meeting. Um, so right, today I will I created a draft PR for the that re, the re revamp of table tabs and big tables. One of the reasons is in draft is that I'm not sure of some API choices I made, and because I haven't uploaded the design briefs that Joe showed us last week, I, I haven't uploaded to the Jira issue, and I don't want to take a PR out of draft status without the proper design documentation. I think that's a good practice to do from now on on our side. Um, Still, the PR is there. Everybody's welcome to um, actually encourage everybody to take a look at it, at least from the code and everything. So I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and do some quick showcase of it. This would be what the new tables would feel like. Um, this, I, 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 I truly believe that these new styles will really fit in within the rest of the UI, especially if you take into account the side panel the hyperlinks and everything else, basically. Uh, especially with hyperlinks. Uh, maybe it's because I'm biased, but I really, really like it. So the new, the, this is what the plugin table would, would look like. Um, for example, let me go to install here. You may notice that um, I have a, a right and left aligned all these columns. Uh, because in order to improve legibility and accessibility, um, I have also, um, for example, here you'll see that the, these colors, this color is a, the strip color row is the same as the breadcrumb as the footer. This hover color is the same as the ones in the that's not showing now. It's the same as the one in the sidebar here. So it's we we uh, we are also moving towards a more consistent color palette, which is good. Um, yeah, and these are the tabs basically. Uh, I encourage everybody to try. I I, I really I am re really proud of the work Joe did with design, designing, and I think it's really nice. 
but we are open to feedback. Of course, everything can be pr improved and iterated upon, so uh, we encourage everybody to give their feedback. Can you click on the updates tab? Yeah. So for some reason, the, this table feels fine to me, but the job table just seems to be a little bit funny with the header. Which one, this? I don't know why this one seems okay. But if you go back to the main page, for some reason, the header bar just seems a bit out of place for me there. And Which, with, uh, mostly with the top left active tab. What does feel out of place? The tabs. I think it's the, possibly the color is just it's mm -hmm. a different color to everything else. Um, I'm not sure. It just looks a bit funny at first glance to me. Um, but I do I do like the design of the rows a lot more. I think that looks quite a lot nicer. Yeah, I think maybe it's because what you see here, you may notice that this is there is this underline. This table doesn't this tab doesn't completely blend into the into the header. There's uh, these two pixels, and that's because otherwise uh, it, it just was impossible without changing the styling of the table in uh, relative to the to the to the tabs. I, yeah, tabs were a difficult component to style, to be honest. I, I had some trouble working on them, but yeah, they are not perfect. I also introduced the ability to have a tab baseline, to have just standalone tabs that have. Uh, a whole uh, that span the full width of a container and then everything underneath them. One of the things I want to people to try and give feedback is because I wasn't sure how to do them is, uh, for example, cases where the uh, a pay, a part of the page has tabs but uses a pane frame widget. For example, this case. This is the thing I'm probably looking feedback or alternatives into what we, sh we should do because this is a weird one. I think that for this particular page, uh... Our strategy is to get rid of that, move it somewhere to global configuration. Uh, and uh, as long as you keep it working, it should be okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just wanted to keep to styling. I first removed the border, but uh, the reason I couldn't remove, and then I realized that this was supposed to be outside of here. But I don't know. Uh, I wasn't sure how to what to do with this. What I probably do is I probably create a follow-up PR in a few weeks, uh, working on the pain frame, maybe adding another border, I don't know, removing the border radius. If mm -hmm. this goes through, of course, if not, if everybody thinks he should work on the pain frame now, I will, of course, uh, depending on the feedback that we I receive. wouldn't worry about this page too much. It's a kind of expert on the page and it doesn't look okay. now anyway. What? Ah, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, there are also some uh, user experience issues included. For example, HTTP proxy configuration. Uh, it's kind of figurable in the plugin manager, but actually it applies uh, globally for your Jenkins instance. Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, so this part definitely has to move elsewhere. And for the rest, upload plugins, etc. Yeah, don't care too much as long as it works. Yeah. I mean, I use it all the time locally, but as long as it works. I think it's overall it's a huge improvement. And if anything, I would invest your time on making those tabs look a little sharper. I mean, the, the underline at the bottom, I mean, the border at the bottom of the tabs is more disturbing to me than the pain frame. Yeah, uh, yeah, let me, let me work on this a bit of screen. Yeah, let you me, mentioned it was difficult, but I mean, just if you have a bit of time, that's where I, to me, that's the, the, the most I, visually. I did go into several options, and that's that's the best I could do. Basically, no. uh, it's it's the best I could do. Uh, so something that I could try is. Uh, so. Yeah, let me. So something that could be that I could try is just you know just making something okay. I need to, to something like this. You know, having a full width baseline. This is something that I I, I actually added an option to the top bar jelly widget to show the baseline, and it can also be uh, uh, shown by default using a CSS variable now. That's what it would look. 
So there's there's just no no way to make it look right right now in Jenkins. But I think that's a nice compromise. And what I would actually do is I would put all of this on top, and I and on the other pages, for example, I would nest I would keep the top bar on top, and put everything down in, in beneath it. But that would mean a follow up PR, of course. I mean, overall, it's streets ahead of what it was. I mean, it's much better. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have yeah, also I mean, created the corresponding issues into the dark theme plugin. I don't okay. know if you noticed him. Yes. I have. So, yeah, I, I encourage everybody to try uh, Uli team, everybody to give their thoughts and and if there's any blocking thing, for example, if the tab stuff is a blocking thing or something that can be, then I can work with it. If not, we can iterate it into in, in the future. But yeah, I appreciate any feedback on this one. Is it, is with, it just these two tables? And tabs. And with tables, and me, I mean big tables. Yeah. The tables with the big table class. So is there any other big table classes? So there's the jobs, so there's like the, um, in this page, all of them. Basically, all of them. For example, this credentials table. Um, yeah, let me go. This one, this one. Uh, system information about Jenkins. So all of these are affected. This one, for example, this one. This table revealed the need to use a proper semantic markup to separate the heading as the footer and the body of the table something that I may create a PR in the, I will probably create a PR after this one uh, to to allow for T head, T, T body and T foot elements with proper styling. The user stable, the system information stable. Um, and I found many other plugins that use this. So it, it, it's it's uh, it's uh, targeting the big table class was a, allowed us to consistently improve the look and feel of all tables, basically, across the engines. Some may not, I don't, Uli, may, I don't know how it would look if you just add the big table class to the to the other bootstrap tables. I don't know how it would look, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it should probably be okay. I'll try it. Normally, uh, the things I'm using are not so, uh, yeah, so black and, full of uh, yeah color it's more light uh, yeah lines and which i'm not sure if it's it matches correctly so i'm still yeah, wondering I mean, why are you using the black header of jenkins uh, and not the blue one <laughs> you don't like the blue one or uh, it's actually not the same black black it's actually what the um, yeah, the secondary button color the secondary text oh, color. No, I just mean the header line, oh. the Jenkins header line. You are always using the old style and not the blue one with the uh, yeah diagonal. Ah, because yeah, I'm because I'm showing this off my local dev environment. Okay. And I just it just make the 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 command line entry uh, 30, <laughs> 30 or forty characters longer. So that's why I'm not okay. running it. Mm -hmm. Are we? Is that getting revisited? At some point soon about either iterating on it or enabling it by default. Um, yeah, I, I that's something we want to talk into. Let's have a let's have another point of order for today for now. Uh, let's talk about the, the new header. The, the experimental header. So if if do, do we have anything else to talk about tables and tabs? Okay, so let's talk about the experimental header. So I think we already covered this a few, a while ago. Joe um, may, may comment on this one. Um, we always said at the beginning that the header, that we, we, we are 110% open to iterate over components, and that's something that's probably needed. The header and breadcrumbs comp uh, components were developed at the beginning of the project we didn't really have the full picture um, of what, where we wanted to, to go, uh, what the color palette was going to be, what the design system was going to be. Uh, for example, we started using the Roboto font 
and then in typography we change it to the system fonts. Um, that, well, what I want to say is that it needs to be revisited to see and to determine if if it's consistent with the, how the design system evolved and if we want to keep it. If we want, for example, if do we want to keep the blue header? Do people actually use it? Is it the right shape, shade of blue? Is it better to have a more a darker shade of blue like we now have in the primary color? Uh, what do we do with the logo? Um, that's something that should be discussed. Definitely. Now, if it, because it needs to be turned on by default, otherwise you get very little feedback. Yeah. I, yeah. Or, yeah or exactly. Feature flag UI that neck that encourages people to turn it on. Yeah, because right now uh, one of the thing, one of the points of the feature flag of the UI feature flag was to enable um, just to hide changes that would be too controversial or that could break plugin. Turns out we were lucky and we didn't do we didn't need it. We all the changes that we've been working on for the past five, six months, we were able to integrate into the main line and minimizing the effect it ha they had on plugins. So does the that does experimental does just a header color and logo change warrant especially a feature flag? I mean, I I I I don't think so either. So that's something we should talk about. Uh, maybe in, maybe we can make it a point to Joe. Do you think we can have? Do you do you think you could have a look at it and have a proposal or something for the next week meeting? Yeah, for sure. In fact, Felix, this is something you and I haven't discussed yet, but I've been working on this sort of on the side and uh, have updated designs for this, like we kind of talked about a couple weeks where um, the logo treatment is adjusted, the color treatment is adjusted, and also, if I remember correctly, font size on the breadcrumbs has some has some tweaks um, to be to feel more appropriate in the space. Uh, so yes, definitely, and we can take a look at those those changes in the next SIG. Okay, great. So I, I I will add it to the agenda right after this meeting. So that's um, do you, is there anything else to talk about this topic? Do you want uh, yeah, to... one comment. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there is a header. Uh, there is experimental UI flag. Personally, I would prefer to keep the experimental flag regardless of uh, whether it changes header or not. So for example, uh, for tables to divs, we can use uh, the same feature flag to enable that. And maybe for future improvements. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, what I want to say is that right now I, I mm -hmm. don't want to fall into Jackney. Uh, uh, right now, it's not. That's what I mean. And the flag is called Jenkins UI Refresh anyway. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, for for changes are big enough that I think they were under their own flag or their own setting. I just don't think, um, and uh, yeah, and I don't think, I, I think just keeping the flag, it, we could incur into technical debt uh, a bit. If it's not needed, if it's needed and we find more, more uses for it, of course, in the future. It also introduces the documentation burden and everything, okay. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking about keeping a single flag. So that we can document that hey, if you're interested in experimental UI, etc., you can set this flag. And yeah. You don't document what exactly it includes. Yeah. Well, if if we have more stuff, sure. Right now, I think it, people are not it, people who say, okay, use this flag to enable the, the experimental Jenkins UI, and they just see a color change in the header. People are not going to be impressed by that, <laughs> basically. So I, I think it's too little to warrant it. We can keep it and use it in the future, of course. Okay. So if nobody might say we can move on to the next topic. Um, yeah, something I want to change. Um, while um, while I'm not able to dedicate proper the needed amount of time to the tables to dips. I do have some spare time. Maybe I wanted to raise the point to to see if there's. I wanted to raise the question to see if there's any quick win in UI wise or UX wise 
we can do in Jenkins, something of tasks, a few tasks that take more or less a day or something like that, that we could do in preparation for the next LTS. Just small things that would be nice to have there. Are any ideas on this topic? I just wanted to, to float the question to see if anybody has any ideas on this one. Fix the monitoring plugin link. It's so broken right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, well, that's something that needs. Okay. Let me write it down. This completely escapes its container. It looks horrible. Which one was that, Tim? Sorry, could you repeat it? It's the monitoring management link on the Manage Jenkins page. It was part of the Manage Jenkins page rework. Um, broke it worse than it previously was. I don't have it. I don't. I don't think I have it. Ah, yes. I. I. I yes, that issue. I recall an issue. Yeah, that, that that was a bit of a misuse. If I recall correctly, of uh, an abuse of markup, that yeah, that's something that doesn't really look right. <laughs> it doesn't look right. It's, it's very broken. <laughs> I didn't want to be harsh, but yeah. Okay. I, don't know, I was just browsing my instance looking for weird things. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, for example, I I, I don't know. I think. Uh, I think that they would do, I think we 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 have a comprehensive set of cha UI changes for the, with the sidebar tables and tabs and hyperlinks for the next LTS that users will definitely see change and the, the dark with the dark theme of course not not a one day change but move blue ocean into regular Jenkins or something yeah <laughs> that, that's going to be hard yeah yeah I think there's something in the community roadmap for that, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yet to be seen. Uh, well, uh, we have got a lot of feedback for Jenkins uh, pipeline browsing improvements as a part of your UX hack fest. If someone is interested uh, to try and hack this topic together, uh, I would be happy to scale something maybe in August or September. Um, but yeah, right now there is no confirmed plan for that as far as I can tell. There is no mm -hmm. yeah. we have I'm to do something. It's, it's, it's so hard to develop on, it's so heavy. It's, 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 uh, it's so difficult to even start it. Uh, yeah. For what is think... worth... Oh, yeah. sorry, Oleg. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to joke about the blue bus. Uh, <laughs> micro hack I wanted uh, to actually create a really small uh, fork of blue ocean which would squash all the complexity get rid of uh, editing features actually just leave browsing uh, and uh, remove all the crappy dependencies like Jira plugin so that uh, keep it really concise and uh, have it as a separate uh, plugin uh, but yeah uh, I haven't uh, went much beyond the concept yeah. yeah, I tried to. I one of the I, I a while ago I tried to to use the um, React to create a Re, uh, React widget that you would use the um, Blue Ocean API and the Blue Ocean components to render the um, to render the, the the chart on a normal Jenkins plugin. Oh, sorry, on the classic Jenkins view, right? Uh, it wasn't that easy to reuse the, that stuff. I think it's way easier to just copy and paste the code and create it from, from scratch. Yeah. That's that, that's my insight because I, I did try it for a few days and I got nowhere. Yeah. No, I've had a bit of a hack on it on dark theme work and I did manage to get a development workflow going, but it was a pain and Stuff didn't work for very well and mm -hmm. it needs some dependency updates as well. The latest node and gulp don't work and stuff. Yeah, yeah that thing is a tough one because uh, I feel bad because every now and then I, I break it <laughs> a bit, <laughs> a bit, but yeah, I don't want to break it that much. Dark theme is an incubating project. So personally, I'm 
perfectly fine with any breakages, especially if it helps us to facilitate feedback uh, and to help and helps us to deliver something stable for the next LCS baseline. Yeah, I mean, it's dark thing is really easy to fix if you break it, and it's also really easy to be compatible with both versions as well. Um, so it's not really an issue. Um, yeah, but but what I would uh, maybe what we could do is to add an official entry, um, a documentation entry, um, how to guide for for plugins to support the dark theme. Because, uh, but what we would need, because I'm pretty, I'm afraid some plugins would just use the CSS variable without the fallback value, and it, it, it the, the the plugin just will not work in Internet Explorer, right? So that's something I'm afraid of. Uh, and also, for that we would need to choose a official uh, minimum uh, CSS API, a supported CSS uh, variable API. And yeah, just understood. productize it. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, make it official. Yeah, it's kind of still being developed right now. So yeah, with the CSS API, we can start documenting it. For example, in a web browser support policy, because we have this page, so we can include something there. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, my my point is, for example, right now we have around the theme file has around 200, 300 CSS variables. I think it's in the order of 200. But I I wouldn't call those a stable API. Maybe 30 of them are stable, like link color, link dark color, all of those variants. But we just cannot say, okay, you, can, you have plugins to, it's okay if dark theme uses them. It's a different thing if plugins depend on variables that are that maybe refactored out. That's great. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's worth separating them to stable and experimental. Um, but yeah, it hasn't been too much of an issue. The plugins, yeah, possibly a page will be useful. Um, and probably in the dark, either in the dark theme repo or in Jenkins for theming. Yeah, I think uh, dark uh, theme uh, could be a good starting point, but technically we can add it to developer guidelines because it applies to any theme. For example, if we update uh, Neo2 theme to CSS variables, it will be exactly the same case. Uh, we already have uh, a theme management for users, so we could create theme development, best practices page uh, in the uh, plugin developer guidelines. And after that, yeah, we can create a blog post or whatever to just highlight that, or maybe a developer meetup. I'm not sure, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, that uh, would make that, so. that would make it sort of official. That would sort of be to a sort of officially support themes. Well, we already documented uh, themes so, uh, support policy on the yes. Jenkins interface with disclaimers so that we don't guarantee compatibility, etc. Yeah, sorry, what I say is that you would officially show an API. As, as I think if, I don't know, for me it would feel as, as long as you publish an API and you document an API, mm -hmm. it changes everything, right? In the flexibility you will have to, to iterate and everything. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm saying it should be done with care. Well, we can avoid the documenting API, we can document best practices. So for example, okay. if you develop a new theme, use uh, Jenkins version or whatever plus, use CSS variables, uh, yeah. uh, support uh, back, uh, fallback so that uh, Internet Explorer compatibility is retained. So something like that. Sounds, really like a, sounds like a great idea. And providing the dark theme as a reference implementation that, hey, if you want to follow example, take a look at dark theme. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you, 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 I think you're right. You, you do make a great point. I think maybe, okay. And maybe we can add a series of recommendations. We uh, update the theme for at least for, maybe themes should be updated every LTS. At least maybe themes should be, blah, all of that stuff. Makes well, sense. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me write it down. Okay. 
Yeah, any anything else somebody anybody wants to talk about? Uh, I've got dark theme working with e charts and the bootstrap plugin. If you want to see that. You. Would you would you share your screen with it? No. Uh, so this one is the bootstrap plugin with warnings MG. Um, so just ignore that, but um, so this is the warnings. This is running the warnings in G build. Um, it's not perfect, but I spent quite a while getting it reasonable. Um, How did you do it? I overrode some of the bootstrap stars with the Jenkins variables. So there's already a Jenkins style, which makes it look better on Jenkins. Um, so you see some of the problems that the um, that CloudBees Jenkins health advisor plugin has. The Bootstrap API plugin doesn't have it because it's got this file, which makes everything fit in a bit better. Um, so basically this section here just resets some of the Bootstrap styles back to Jenkins styles. Yeah. It, it, yeah, about the cloud is health advisor. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a completely different thing because it uses Bootstrap just to show alerts. And yeah. it's going to be fixed as a bump baseline. This is a much more complex case, definitely. Um, I think um, I, I will try to look into this plugin. Something I, I've been wanting to do for, a, for quite a while is looking into the Bootstrap plugin. And for example, for me, it makes no sense in, well, it makes little sense uh, to, let me rephrase, it would be better in my opinion to sh that the version of Bootstrap that ship, that the Bootstrap for API plugin ships do, do, does not contain uh, typography resets, um, basic uh, style resets and everything. It just includes, for example, table widgets. It just includes cards, it includes everything else. But yes, they shouldn't override the typography of the page, for example. Um, and that's something I think can be done to modularly load the SCSS file. So that's something I wanted to look at into the future. And that would reduce the need for you to, to work on, for example, the body, the, the changes to the body tag you shouldn't need to do it. Yeah. Because uh, the, the plugin will always run within Jenkins and Jenkins will always provide, we, we know Jenkins will provide a set of base styles. So. Yeah, I did, I did have a lot of press to just stripping it back and seeing what was in use, but there were quite a lot of things in use specifically around the table, um, and some of the icon um, mm -hmm. part of it. Um, I don't know if I, I probably wouldn't have time to do that full strip back. Um, no, no, I'm not saying you should do it. I think it's great. Um, yeah, I think it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only 30 lines. Um, happy to spend a bit more time on it if people think it's worth it, um, fixing some of this. But for me, I was happy with it here. It's a lot better than what it previously was. It was, it was very jarring before. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks it looks great actually. Did you were you able to try it on Internet Explorer eleven? Um, I could, if it though, I have I haven't currently. Um, so Internet Explorer eleven should just look like what it looked like before. So none of these styles should get applied. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is just so anything that's not missing should fall back to what's set in Bootstrap. Um, it's the same as the pipeline stage model. It is was what I thinking. It's what I was thinking, yeah. Um, so that's the Bootstrap API plugin. The other one is the um, eCharts um, plugin. Um, so this is, I've only done the trend chart so far, um, but this is like the JUnit plugin. Um, and then these are the warning in, warning in G charts. The only thing I've set is the text color. Um, 
without these changes, the text color was too faded. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just. I mean, it, I think it looks great, but that's well, that's my opinion. Uh, is it trend chart? It's literally it's just this line here, pulls the text color, um, and then pulls back to this if it's not available. Ah um, uh, yes. And I've tested it on old versions of Jenkins, and it works fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love I love the the way CSS the way that you can access CSS variables from JavaScript. Yeah, the hardest bit is just the e charts documentation is very 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 extensive, and it's very hard to find what you want. It's like it's, it's like API documentation, but um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not it's not very user friendly. Put it that way. Um, I see. I found the right variables in the end. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's so that's great. that. So those, have, those have all got pull requests open. And so that's the JUnit one. The latest state of the JUnit one is the top one. Mm -hmm. Which I showed last time. Looks great. Hmm. I think it's a nice yeah. approach. Um, um, I'm wondering, Uri, were you able to work with the new color palette in Java as well? Yes, I tried it. I posted some pictures, but I didn't found much time uh, this week and last week to... Uh, I thought it would make more sense to have it some kind of toggle so you can simply switch it in the user interface. Otherwise, it's a little bit hard to change and look at it and change and look at it, so... Yeah. I thought it would make sense to make it simpler to configure. Totally. Because the current colors are a little bit, yeah, let's say, I don't find the right English word, they are so, so hard. And the old colors are some more smooth and some, yeah, not so, yeah. so. Yeah, I understand what you say. And yeah, pro the same is uh, maybe it's comparable to your new tables. The, the new tables with this black, everything black is it's very hard if you look at it the first time. And if you look at tables in in GitHub, for instance, you just have these small lines, mm -hmm. and now we have these hard blocks everywhere. And the same is for this color palette. So I think we the colors should be a little bit more. Yeah, not smooth. It's uh, a little bit light, more light, lighter. Or how do you say it? Uh, warmer, maybe. Uh, yeah, warmer or, or mm, softer. Softer. Yeah, softer is a better. Um, yeah, yeah, softer. But I think um, I, I try to find a way to make them uh, configurable. Then it's mm -hmm. maybe easier to click in the UI and then change a, a slider and then you see how the colors will change. It's, it's easier to see, I think, rather than mm. compiling and deploying and then you see the new colors and then you can't compare to the old colors, so. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to hot swap that. Um, um. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit annoying that those those colors don't change live when you change CSS or anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's currently it's in Java uh, the the colors, but maybe uh, I think it's uh, there is a way to replace them, and uh, in the uh, in the JavaScript part. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Possibly there could be CSS variables as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be much simpler. Yeah? So oh, eCharts has a, a theming capabil capability included, so you can change the colors of the charts using a different theme. But I'm not sure how this would work with our theming concept. I'm not sure if that works, that we can use Jenkins themes to style the charts. Because I think for the uh, the black theme, you need uh, a different color 
for all these things. Otherwise, it looks a little bit weird. Sure, there's yeah. something we can do. Uh, probably, um, probably we can use the. Um, we have a wrapper for the e charts API, right? I think we can use the CS variables there, probably. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't know. I, ha I haven't looked into it. Uli, may I share my script for a second? Um, yeah. So is what you were saying something like this? Pardon? I, I don't know. What are you asking? Yeah, the, the table color, I mean, yeah. the table heading color, something more. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still thinking. Uh, all modern UIs don't use uh, a background color. They just use lines to style tables and tabs. Like the oh. calendar in my tab, this is just a line and no color. Mm -hmm. If you have a look at uh, GitHub, uh, they use, t when they use, t I think the, the color is so, yeah, it's so highlighting everything, but the, the, the table header is not the interesting thing. The table is the interesting thing. Yeah, so here, you, here they use a, a lighter the, gray. Yeah, and if you look at the uh, the the, uh, the, ta the tabs, for instance, in in GitHub, um, yeah. Yeah, the, they use. Yeah, this uh, they have different tabs. Can you click at code? And you, I think, in code you see some tabs inside. No. Hmm. Do you use to? I think it's in issues, maybe, or in pull requests. Yeah, this are uh, no. no. I don't know. To 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 be honest, I'm request. not in. I'm can, not can informed. Open, sorry, uh, can you open one pull request just? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm in dark theme plugin. Yeah, uh, okay. one of the closed ones. It does not matter. Just. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, here is, uh, and uh, you just open it, and here you have these uh, tabs. And these are the typical modern tabs, I say, where you just have one line which shows the surroundings. Yeah. The same as in Bootstrap, they also use just a line. And I think this using a background for all these tabs is so hard somehow. It, it takes the focus of the eyes. And I'm not sure if it's so good. In, in GitHub, you see it's everything is so kind of light and yeah, but I don't, soft. Yeah. And using a background color for the tabs is somehow yeah. And yeah, the um, problem, the problem I found is that, um, for example, tabs in Jenkins, these are great if the tabs are standalone and just section everything underneath them. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, but here in Jenkins, we have tabs attached to tables. And that's actually what it mm -hmm. is. Yeah, I know. So maybe, maybe we can add a, ta a tab variant. It's, it's, it's easy enough to create a tab variant color. I, can I actually one. quite like the way it looks. I mean, just to be contrarian. I mean, but I mean, I think, yeah, it's maybe should just... is my issue with it. Um, just looking at that screen, my focus goes straight to that header. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's because this header is in primary color. If you, I think it's, I, I very much prefer this. I think, uh, I think using this uh, in this way, I think the header is neutral enough. The color is on top. It's definitely less eye grabbing, but it's still it still does draw draw you there. Mm -hmm. but so would you prefer, would you prefer to go with uh, a, a gray like this one, for example? Mm -hmm. would, would, I prefer this color to the one you had up before. Um, what if it wasn't, what if there was no color though? No color. Yeah, I can, let me sketch something at uh, tomorrow, okay? And see what I can do. It, it's going to, it's not, I, I, let, let me give it a try, okay? So uh, Amber, you are an actual designer, <laughs> do you have any, 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 uh, can you have any insight of the current design trends regarding this element or of colors or anything? Um, I don't have any preference in terms of color. I think that 
I feel like generally speaking, having tabs, you really only need a border to make it feel like it's all included. And then the table can be a separate element. When it's like a co combined tab and table, it's difficult because you're trying to make the header the same color as the tab. But if you just move the table into the tab section, it might be easier to understand. Header into the tab section. So, so you mean separating uh, the tabs and the header? Yeah, like separate the table, like move it down into the tab. So the tab is just like a container. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see, I see what you mean. Uh, actually, uh, to understand. Otherwise, instead of a tab, maybe it, like a toggle. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is a weird case because it's only present maybe here and in another place. And um, the, the problem with these tabs is that uh, it was sort of, I, I recall seeing, uh, I was doing some research yesterday or today uh, uh, to see where this was implemented. Uli, I think uh, there was a piece of feedback from you that uh, uh, argued in favor of putting together the tabs and, and table and removing separation. The problem with with putting an underline, by the way, is that it looks really weird having a different color line between the tabs and the header. Yeah, like, I don't I don't think that you need necessarily to make a border underneath the tab. Just maybe if the if you considered the tab as sort of you know like file folders, what they're kind of modeled after, and then the table is inside of it instead of putting tabs onto the table. Mm -hmm. It might just make more sense as a container, but, but other than that, I mean, this works. I think it, it does just fine. It just sort of is like um, putting two different mental models together, right? Yeah, so what we did is try to work within the framework we had. Uh, if we want to go on a more radical. So yeah, I found out this PR. So wait a second. So there was an existing PR a while ago, six years ago, basically, mm -hmm. uh, that created this. Uh, the first thing was this. I, I found this earlier today. So um, in chain, in the, well, you, we can follow this discussion. And I will put it on the on the minutes. So basically, it eventually became this on this discussion. So okay. So do we want to reopen this discussion? Um. I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Could do. You can also have a look at the tables from the warnings plugin, for instance. They use um, uh, quite a softer model, so the tabs and the tables. And typically, in tables, you also have a search and a filter and things like that, which mm -hmm. are currently not used in Jenkins, but they can be used, so. Yeah, okay, wait a second, please. Okay, we're over the time. I don't want to, to delay yeah. this any any further. Yeah, so you, you're using this. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like this, right? The table's in the tab instead of being part of the tab. I, let, let me let me let me say that we I very much prefer this this one. Uh, also, we just try to work within the framework we had. Um, what I what I suggest is let me try to come up with uh, some alternative heading colors with a, maybe a, a black full, sorry a full white uh, heading background and and see let's validate it maybe i will share a few screenshots tomorrow on the pr as part of the discussion i will ping you Uli and tim and, and amber if you have a, a and and yeah we, we iterate and nothing stops us from shipping something now and working it next print yeah um, absolutely but, because uh, what i'm afraid of is that we have i think i don't want to delay any meaningful improvements of tables 
for mm-hmm. the for for the next LTS on something that you, we we can just iterate. Sure. So do uh, do you agree with this approach, Lee? Also. Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and we are we are over the time. Thank you, everybody. I think this this has been a great meeting. Uh, and see you in two weeks. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.